three ways we can install asterisk. We can um, compile it from the source, download the source, compile it, and install it. We can get it from one of the repositories. If you're using like CentOS, you could uh, yum install asterisk. Um, not the best way, really, because you don't know which version you're getting and whether it's up to date. And then a distribution, be it like free PBX or asterisk now, which includes free PBX. <laughs> and what it'll do is install Linux as well as an asterisk as well as a GUI on top of it. Um, and that's pretty popular. Again, you need to choose your version. I would recommend one of those that falls in the orange line, preferably Asterisk 16. We talked about the standard releases versus the uh, long-term support um, and the differences between those. Uh, unless you need the bleeding edge, uh, you probably want to use a long-term support release in a production environment. Um, of course, the developers will say the opposite. They want people hammering on these standard releases to make sure they're, they get their bug fixes. Um, again, each of these get an extra year of security patches. So right now, Asterisk 13 and 16 are the two LTS releases that are fully supported. And Asterisk 15, standard release, is a... Uh, now in bug fix only, or, or security fix only, sorry. And Asterisk 16 was supposed to be released today. I have not received my email yet. Um, so to install from source, you can go out and grab a tarball off the asterisk.org website. Uh, everybody know what a tarball is? Essentially, it's kind of like a zip file in the Windows world. It's a uh, way you compress everything all together, and you can uncompress it. Um, if you go to asterisk.org, there'll be a list of all the different versions of asterisk, and each of those have their own tarball out there. Or you could use git to uh, get the latest and greatest from the uh, git repository, which is what the developers use for uh, source code control. Um, probably only interesting to developers using Git, but there's no reason you can't go out and do that as well. So to get the source tarball, we'll go to the asterisk.org website, go to the uh, download tab up at the top. That was neat. Um, once you click on that, you will get There's four different tabs here. Uh, one for the asterisk communication framework, or asterisk itself. Um, then there's one for the uh, DOTI, and one for the libpri. You want to download both of those if you happen to have a T1 or an analog card, because that includes the hardware drivers for Linux for those cards. And then maybe you want to use the uh, distro for um, Asterisk Now, which includes free PBX. Again, if you have a hardware card, you want the DOTI as well as the uh, libpri if you're going to be using PRI signaling um, on a T1. So first thing you want to do is uh, make sure you um, have all the dependencies that on your Linux server that are required for asterisk. And somebody created a script, so when you download the asterisk tarball and untar it, within that directory where you untarred it, there's a script called install prereq. And what that'll do is, if you're on CentOS, it'll go out and get all the uh, RPM packages required for asterisk. Uh, again, if you're on Ubuntu, it'll do the same thing and get the dev packages required. And it'll either install it or just give you a list of them. Unfortunately, I think I've already done that. I won't be able to show you much. But Asterisk 
disk. I'm currently using a release candidate. And trib. And you can do dot slash uh, install prereq. I'll just do test so it'll list what it would install if I was actually going to be installing. So it went out and said, hey, you need to install these for asterisk. Um, apparently I don't because I've already installed asterisk, but if I, <laughs> um, that's probably an update with Astra 16 that requires a few other um, packages. And if I wanted to install those, you say install. And it will go out there and find all the packages required and download them and actually install those packages for me. Uh, in the past, <coughs> you used to have to figure out what packages you were missing on your own and kind of, kind of a headache. Uh, this script is really nice. Of course, those aren't available for some reason. Um, to some, some of these packages are in other repositories uh, for CentOS or Red Hat variants. You would probably want to add these repositories. Uh, the EPEL is a big one, um, which has a lot of the packages that Red Hat does not have for installing, but the uh, Linux community built these other repositories for. Then to install asterisk, you would do a dot slash configure, which will go out and make sure you have all your dependencies. out there and check, make sure you have all the required dependencies. You might see some no's in that list. That just means that you don't have it, so I'm not going to build a certain aspect of asterisk because you don't have a dependency that it requires. After you've done that, you will do a make menu select. What this is going to do, if I can get to it, Terminal's not big enough. <laughs> oh, let's try something here. Well, that's easy, I can fix that. There we go. Um, and what this does is it lets you select which modules you want to compile into Asterisk, which, um, you know, sound files you want it to be installed within asterisk. Uh, there's different categories, so you'll go look at the applications. You can go and select and then select these, so maybe I didn't want this, uh, I'm not even sure what it is, uh, so I unselected it or select it. You, know, you have all your different codecs and format interpreters, your different channel drivers, you can see that uh, the core channel drivers are dotty, ex, motif, which I forget what that even is, uh, pjsip, and then the RTP used for both chansip and chan pjsip. 
And then you have your extended channel drivers, which you'll note that ChanSIF is now in the extended section. Skinny is the Cisco protocol. Unistim, I think, is Nortel. I don't remember. Those are rarely used nowadays. Once you're done, you will save and exit. After you've done that, you can do a make and make install. And that'll actually build asterisk. I'm going to do those in two steps instead of one. Um, it's probably going to say, hey, you've already built everything. And I would do a make install, but it's already installed, and I don't want to break things, so I'm not going to do that. Then you can do uh, make samples, which will install all the sample configuration files in Etsy asterisk. If I did a make samples, it would overwrite my files that I have in there that are, have been customized, so I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, and then make config. Anybody have any idea what make config does? What it does is it installs the scripts that tells Asterisk to start on reboot or on boot up. Uh, it, it's all the init scripts required. Again, we've seen the uh, make menu config. A little note on PJSIP. Um, prior to 13.8, you had to go out and download and build uh, the PJSIP library externally from building asterisk. Uh, PJSIP is part of the PJ project, which is actually maintained by somebody other than Digium. And it's a full, complete uh, SIP stack, uh, very robust SIP stack. In fact, most SIP phones and soft phones use the uh, PJSIP stack for their uh, SIP implementation. So, but prior to 13.8, you'd have to go download that and install it and make sure you had your versions right and all of that. After that, now you can do a dot slash configure and tell it to use the bundled um, PJ project, which what that actually does, it'll go out to, Astra, to uh, Digium's website and pull over a certain version that's required for this version of Asterisk you're building and it will go ahead and compile PJ project and then compile asterisk for you, which is really nice. It's much better than uh, having to worry about the uh, versioning and all of that of the uh, PJ project. And the developers love it too because now when you say I have an issue, you file a bug report or something like that, you just tell it which version of asterisk and tell them I did bundled and they know exactly which version of PJ project you have. Um, in the past, uh, Digim hosted some packages, some RPMs or some Debian packages for uh, allowed you to install Asterisk uh, using a package management tool. Uh, Digim no longer maintains those and does not recommend that you install Asterisk using a package manager, mainly because you don't know what you're getting. Uh, you, you, could easily be getting an out-of-date version of Asterisk that has some security um, holes in it that have not been patched. And you're always recommended to go out and, and download the latest and greatest Asterisk of one of the uh, release versions. The uh, distributions, um, we have FreePBX, which quite a few of you are using. and Digium had their own version called Asterisk Now. I predict Asterisk Now will probably be going away <laughs> because they're kind of redundant. So since free PBX is the one that's probably most up to date and most supported. Uh, that, that'll be the way moving forward. Uh, what these are is it's an ISO image that uh, contains Linux, Asterisk, and the free PBX GUI um, all in one. Um, and that's an easy way to get up and going pretty quickly. Uh, the free PBX community is 
very good about keeping the asterisk version up to date as well, so you really don't have to worry about uh, uh, security issues. And I think we might have made it. Um, we went through three ways to install asterisk. Um, any questions on installing asterisk? Anybody never installed asterisk? You think you could now? <laughs> it's, it's pretty simple, really. There's plenty of direct, uh, um, information online of what to do and how to resolve the dependencies. Yes? Supposedly this morning it was released. I have not seen that press release. <laughs> yeah, it's LTS. Really? Well, I'll have to go talk to Matt's here. Maybe he couldn't get it pushed out from here for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it'll be released today, I'm pretty sure. Unless they found a major bug they're having to fix, which it was going good as of last week. I, I don't see any issues with it. So why don't we go ahead and break for lunch?